<laughs> hey, what's happening, Athens? Hey. How you doing, Paul? All right. I'm Ballard Leesman. I'm your host of Box Office Banner. This is my partner, Paul Trudeau. How you doing, man? Fine, just dandy. We're doing great. We're at, we're at the top. We're on top of the world. We're on top of Athens, as you can see. And uh, this is our second anniversary show. We've been on the air. They, I don't know why they let us be on the air for two years so far. But uh, we're going to show you some sort of like best of, worst of scenes during the show today. Right. Of our last two years. Our sponsor today is the town of Athens. That's right. We'd like to revel in its classicness. In its classic city glory. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to show you some scenes from movies like There's Something About Mary from the Farrelly Brothers who made Kingpin and Dumb and Dumber. It looks very funny. Also some previews for... Uh, Mafia, Jane Austen's Mafia. Slapstick. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about Lethal Weapon 4 and Madeline and Small Soldiers. So there. Be right back. downtown Athens. Let's go get some CDs or something. Let's see, what, uh, see what's happening down here at Walk Street. Yeah. Hey, um, you know, Francis McDormand is in this movie, Madeline. Did you get a chance to see this yet? Uh, Madeline, uh, I know kids the movie book. just opened up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know her from Fargo. She's married sure, to one of the Coen Fargo. brothers. She was in Raising Arizona. Oh, look who Hey, is. look! It's what Dave What the hell are you guys talking about? It's Dave Marr, ladies and gentlemen. He's been on Local our show Local country before. singer, songwriter. Off and on the beat. <laughs> this is our big second anniversary. Yeah, yeah man, he's been a guest on our show before. Yeah. You know what Madeline is? You ever heard of Madeline? The delightful mm -hmm. series of French children's books. Yeah, I mean, he means that in a nice way. Uh, well, here's a scene where Francis McDormand is narrating what's going on with this movie. It's a screen version of, the, I guess it's a French book. Ludwig Bailamans is the guy's name. What a name. Yeah, are you sure he's French? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Well, here's, here's, here's the clip. We'll just cut to the clip. In an old house in Paris that was covered in vines, lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines, they broke their bread and brushed their teeth and went to bed. They smiled at the good and frowned at the bad. And sometimes they were very sad. They left the house at half past nine, in two straight lines, in rain or shine. The smallest one was Madeline. What do you think? It's great. You've really captured it. Madeline! Au revoir. Action. All right, so there's 12 little girls who stay at this little school in Paris, and Frances McDormand is the nun. Miss Clavel takes care of them. And Hattie Jones is the little girl who plays Madeline. She's the oh. smallest one, and she's not afraid of anything, pretty much. Uh, and she's sort of the leader of the bunch, but she's an orphan. There's a lot going on in these stories. It's just a combination of all these storybook stories. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, it's a really charming, very funny little family movie, whereas, you know, like, uh, a lot of the stuff out this summer is a little too vulgar, maybe, and, and mean-spirited for, uh, for little, little kids. So it's wholesome. It's wholesome, like this scene right here where they, they find this uh, golden retriever uh, who saved Madeline when she fell into the river. See? Oh, it's funny, and the, the little wholesome. girls are really funny. The right little back. doggy saved her. Genevieve. Genevieve. Great name. We'll never be able to keep her. 
Something is not right. What's going on, girls? Nothing! All right, so that was a scene from Madeline, and uh, it's a very cute movie. It looks adorable. It's a, extremely adorable, and you should bring the little kids. I even heard, like, little six-year-olds walking out with their grandparents going, Grandma, that was a good movie. Look at and the kids over uh, there. Hi, kids. Yeah. Hi. See, if you're, if you're about 18 and you're starting your orientation process at UGA, you'd probably wouldn't want to go see Madeline, but if you're older or younger, you would. Okay. Um, and Nigel Hawthorne, who was in uh, The Madness of King George and a few yeah, other things recently, uh -huh. he plays the mean old Lord Cuckoo Face, they call him, uh, who might close the school down, so there's a little struggle going on. And there's also a little kid who lives next door who plays pranks on him and on and on and on. It's very okay. funny. So very Madeline's funny. really good. Madeline's really good. Okay. Go see it. Moving on, let's show a preview. What do you say? Okay. You like Lloyd Bridges, don't you? Well, yeah. I mean, he was, you know, God. he was great in the airplane movies, and yeah. he uh, he's sort of, you know, I, I miss him already, yeah, yeah. the poor, poor guy, but this is his last film, Mafia, uh. Jane Austen's Mafia, mm -hmm. uh, which is directed by the same guy, I think his name is Abrahams, uh, who made the airplane movies. Yeah. Same kind of humor. It's a spoof of the uh, Godfather series, so you know. So it's a drama. Sort like... of a wacky humor, the oh, kind that yeah. many people don't seem to like, but... Right. I think it's going to be very funny. Let's I like this kind of thing. Here's a scene where he introduces, Jay Moore introduces Christina Applegate to Lloyd Bridges. And guess what? She tastes just like chicken. She tastes like chicken? She tastes like chicken, yeah. Oh, that is... Hey, Pop. <laughs> hey. I missed you, son. Oh, I missed you too, Pop. How was the war? Did you have fun? I was in a week, Diane. Tastes like chicken. Tony! Hey! <laughs> My big brother got married, huh? Who is she? Uh, Summer Diane, girl. Who's this? Oh, this is Diane. We went to Vassar together. Hi, Joey. Anthony's told me so much about you. Psychopath, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, he seems so nice, honey. Get back here or I'll shoot you in the face! All right, Small Soldiers is the next movie. We don't have any clips for this, unfortunately, but I think you've probably seen plenty of it on TV. Just watch your local Burger King advertisements. So. Yeah. This is Phil Hartman's last movie. I mean, Why? We keep losing, because he passed away. Oh, that's right. Everybody's passing oh. away. Chris Farley, Phil Hartman, everybody. Roy Rogers? Jeez. But... I love his hamburgers. This is a sort of violent action figure comedy. Is that how you would describe it? Yeah, I, I don't know how to describe it. I wish we could have a scene to show you, but... Uh, I tell you, Paul, I don't, I didn't like Small Soldiers very much. I thought it was really poorly written. And the animation, the sort of animatronic sort of toy soldiers were impressive in a way, but God, it was just a dumb it movie. It looked like it could uh, be pretty cool, but the, uh, it's so slow paced at first and like, oh, yeah. you're, you're, they're trying to build up to this, you know, huge chaotic Battle. last scene, right? Yeah. But those little soldier men, they're evil. Yeah. They're bad guys. Tommy Lee Jones is the voice of the main one. I think his name is Chip Hazard or something like that. And it just wasn't all that enjoyable, and, and the, the adults weren't even There was very a lot good. of squirming in the theater. I actually left before the end. I didn't stay to see the battle scenes. Oh. I saw the flaming tennis balls going into the house, and I just said, well, It wasn't I'm worth leave. it. I mean, all I gotta do is step on them. So say no to small soldiers, okay? Like ants. But we did Instead, see... Instead, they get beat up by them. We so. did see Lethal Weapon, you okay? Yeah. Lethal Weapon 4. And uh, this is the biggie, you know, the big fourth one. They started doing this in 87 with Danny Glover and Mel Gibson. And here's a scene from Lethal Weapon. Hey, let's board him! Let's board him! What are you talking about? Let's board him! Ghost Guard! It's a fire on the freedom! It's a fire on the freedom! Okay, 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 I'm upside. That wasn't you now. Okay. LAPD! Stop where you are! You! Hold it right there! Pachala! Pachala! Let us out! He's got it! it. He's got it! Take care. Get over here! Yeah, 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 you, you don't Get know how to do it! Get closer! Get closer! Get closer! Get closer! Get closer! What'd he say? No, he said, he said, watch his back! Ah! Why'd you tell me you were gonna oh, shoot? Shut up! 
Get closer! Yeah, tied up! Alright, tied up! Pull it 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 up! The series for the third time. Hey, are and, we uh, walking the streets of Compton, or is that Nick Bielli? <laughs> it's me, straight out of Compton. Hey, man, how you doing, I'm Nick? Doing all right. How are you? Wow. What a okay. coincidence. Listen, we're talking about Lethal Weapon 4, and that was a scene where the freighter is about to run him over, and you know, big action stuff. Hey, have you seen any movies lately, Nick? I saw Out of Sight the other night. No way. <laughs> I really did. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. That's with uh, George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez, and Jennifer Lopez looks very healthy. Yeah. What's so special about Jennifer Lopez? She's just such a woman. <laughs> such a womanly figure she's got. I think you said it best. This is Nick Bielli, folks. He tends bar here at the Hi-Hat. He's, he's a mean fella, and he could play a mean four-string, too. I'm looking forward to your next show. It's actually really sir. nice. <laughs> you got anything else to say about Box Office Banner? It's our second anniversary. Well, happy anniversary, you guys. Okay. Here's another scene from Lethal Weapon 4. <laughs> Keep your hands inside, then! That was the final scene from Lethal Weapon 4. And uh, of course, Joe Pesci is in this for the third time. Rene Russo is about nine months pregnant, and she's taking karate kicks to the face, yes. and right and left. And there's some pretty big explosions. I mean, I don't even know what the first scene was all about. Who was the guy with the, f the flamethrower? I don't know. Yeah, I think he's just a psycho, you know? A lot of it's pretty funny, and thanks to Mel Gibson and Danny Glover being really good together. But Definitely a blockbuster uh, with lots of cars flying through the air and explosions and um like you mentioned chris rock is, is pretty funny in the he's movie. he's really the nice the nice thing about the movie he's, yeah. he's got a lot of energy he's chris rock playing chris rock right. basically he's not really a great uh actor. and the big gag in the movie is he's okay yeah. is that he is seeing uh danny glover's daughter and uh <laughs> and uh fans right but danny glover doesn't know it and uh, but Danny Glover thinks that Chris Rock might have a crush on him, so it's really strange. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can bleep that out. <laughs> but uh, we're going to cut away to our sponsors right now. We're in downtown Athens. We're going to try to find some people to talk about movies who won't pull their pants down. It's just the grit. It's everybody's favorite vegetarian restaurant. But you don't have to be vegetarian to eat there. Because if you ask me, the grit is the best restaurant in town, period. No bones about it. You will always stock plenty of copies of your new releases. We will always stock plenty of copies of our new releases. You will always stock lots of independent foreign and hard to find films. We will always stock lots of independent foreign and hard to find films. You will watch these videos with me in my hot tub. Vision Video. 
great landmarks. Niagara Falls, the Pyramids, the Grand Canyon, and Compadres. Great masterpieces. David, the Mona Lisa, Starry Night, and Compadres. Steve Arenos, an Athens tradition since the dawn of time, serving all the stuff that makes life worth living. Pizza, salad, subs, hot wings, and a seemingly endless flow of ice cold beer. And if you're intimidated by the beautiful people that hang out on our deck, that's okay, we deliver. Steve Arenos on South Lumpkin Street and Five Points. Uh, there's a movie called There's Something About Mary, made by the Ferrelli brothers, uh, the guys who made Kingpin and Dumb and Dumber, and it's really funny looking, and it's got Ben Stiller. Have you seen anything about this? I've never heard of it. you seen Lethal Weapon 4? Oh, yeah. Did you like it? Oh, I didn't see it, but I've heard of it. Let's, see, you, let's see the scenes of There's Something About can Mary. Can you show us your... I've been learning about the story of the film as we make the film myself. <laughs> are you going to the prom? I, I don't... Yeah, I think prom. Because I thought maybe um, dumb. we could go together. Oh, you're going to go with, like, a bunch of people, or...? No, no. <laughs> I mean, you and me, we could go together. <laughs> it's a story about a guy that I play named Ted, who's in love with uh, his high school crush, Mary. Oh, no, I... No, no, I was... And I decide after 13 years that I'm going to find her because my life isn't complete without her. I'm not Mary again. And crushes don't last for 13 years, right? So why don't you look her up? So I hire uh, Matt Dillon to help me find her. I guess she packed on a few pounds over the years. Oh, yeah? So she's a little, she's a little chubby? Oh, I'd say about a deuce, deuce and a half. Not bad. Oh. Hi, deuce and a half. Right. It's autobiographical, but it's not about us. Hmm. Hmm? You hired me to find your girl, and I did. And then the truth is, I really started to like her. All right. Yeah, and this is one of the many fine parking meters you'll find in Athens. And uh, we were just wondering what you thought of Lethal Weapon. Not much. Well, that fellow you saw before the series Eclipse was Hayden from the man, the man or Astro Man Servitron guy, and uh, he's almost always out of town. Don't give away his identity. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, and we're standing outside the Morton Theater here, and uh, we're going to wrap things up. I think there's something about Mary that's going to be really, really funny. Chris Elliott, I mean, he's been in some stinkers, but geez, he's, he he's just looks really funny in this thing. Yeah. And Jonathan Richmond did some of the songs for the soundtrack. Oh, well. He was in Kingpin. Remember the Roger Clemens scene? Yeah. Uh, you want to dance? Are you asking me to dance and all that stuff? Uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to wrap things up here. This is a series of best ofs and worst ofs from the past two years of our show. Ballard, and it's been a really, really great time thanks. that we've had over the past two years. Thank you. And um, I just want to tell you how pleased and honored I am to be next to such an icon of the local athlete. Does anybody ever come up to you and go, Hey, man, you're that guy on TV. <laughs> all the damn time. Well, and... Uh, but it's fine. We also it's have funny. to mention that Ballard's not going to be here the next show because he's right. going on tour with his little band here. See this, folks? That's Chris Lopez of the Rocketeens, Atlanta band. Actually, they're from Cabbage Town, right? Lots of reverb, lots of loud guitars, and me. And Ballard's really in Hayride, but he's kind of like a, um, he sells himself. Yeah. So when I go off on, out of town, this guy fills in on drums, and you should go see him. Yeah. Okay, folks, here's the best of. It's been a nice two years, and God willing, they'll give us two more. Thanks, Athens. Let's you've get been out a of here. Great, a you've been coffee. a great host. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Five parking meters. Now, I'm not calling myself a critic. You know, no, I'm, not I don't even, I don't, I'm not calling you a critic either. I don't really even like movie critics, but... This is the worst movie I've ever seen. You know, they're just trying to... Hey, did you see The Crow? Oh, slow. Oh, slow. See, I, that, that kind of... How you doing today, sir? Um, you know, 
fair, kind of dull. The action scenes were sort of cliche. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Cabinet okay, of Dr. One. Caligari. I wouldn't spend a whole lot of money on this movie, would you? I mean, no. six bucks is kind of out. Mondo Kane, good one. I enjoy that one. Mondo Kane. Um, then you know, again, I'd, I'd wait till the, six bucks. maybe the matinee, or, or wait till it comes out, or just see Yo Yimbo, or Fistful of Dollars. I Will Dance in Your Grave, Cannibal Hookers. That's the title, okay, that's Cannibal a, Hookers. That's a good one. Guaranteed. You said you were driving. Ooh, I don't that. have my car. We're gonna have to call him. He's gonna fire us. He's nice, gonna get somebody yeah. else to do the show. Ooh. Check it out. We got the keys in there. Just get it. Just get so it. What? Just, what? Come on, come on. We gotta go. We gotta, what, we're what gonna be fired from box office banner. I know how to work these things. Yes. Jesus Christ. God. Well, just go then. Go. No. Get away from my car. Oh Christ. He's coming to get his car back. No. Do you know who we are? Get away! We're in box no, office! Go away! We're talking about uh, the next movie is Star Trek. This is the eighth film uh, from that whole series. And this is the new generation cast, all from TV. You know, uh, uh, Patrick Stewart and uh, Jonathan Frakes and, and uh, people like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know the first thing about Star Trek. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I, I got the idea. Remember the bad guys? The Beyond Borgs. The Beyond Borgs. They're like the space age fascists who take over and assimilate you into their collective and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, it took me a while to catch on. And, and Patrick Stewart's pretty dramatic, you know. Oh, yeah. And that's good. He, he, he helps the movie, but uh, he, he's kind of dry. I mean, if I was in his place, I'd be freaking out. I mean, Borgs are pretty, pretty damn well, What are we going to look at here? This is where uh, they realize that the Borg from their cube starship or, or whatever take over the Enterprise, is that the name of it? What are you looking at? Um, this is weird people. Uh, anyway, you know, he, he realizes that this is the uh, the climate where the Borg like to hang out, I guess. You're kind of Borging me. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm so Borging. You know, these horror movies are great. You never know what's going to happen, you know, the whole way through. It's suspenseful. <gasps> See, I mean, it's, it's, it's scary stuff, Boom. that kind of thing. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I, I didn't think I was going to like it. <laughs> But and that girl's in it, Salma Hayek. Wow. That's about that, that's that's the, that's, that's the drawing point, right? That's what brings people like me and Paul to see movies like this. And I uh, heard there was some uh, uh, off-screen <laughs> tension between the two stars. Well, I mean, look at Matthew Perry. I don't I don't doubt it one bit. Tension. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it must have been hard to work together. Like chains and whips. <laughs> yeah, some issues might have been raised. Can you I know? say that? Well, anyway, it's a very oh. to keep abreast of the situation. This is a this is something that I want to knock around. Just an idea that's it's a it's a it could have been a very titillating story, but uh, boy, just look at this clip and we'll come out of that and tell you what's up. <laughs> uh, seemingly sponsored by Coca Cola because every time you look, there's a Coke can or a Coke machine so? right behind. Hey, 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 hey. We saw this together. We sat in the front row and just about booed our way through the thing. And uh, so, did you like this movie? I don't like that. <laughs> did you really <laughs> like it? I hated this movie. Uh, from the same fellow who did Fear of a Black Hat. It's and, called um, Sprung. It's called Sprung. It's opening right here at Beechwood this On week. May right 14th. Now. May right. 14th. Yep. So tell them what's up. There's like a bunch of slang in this movie that well, I don't yes. quite understand. For those who don't have the not, street so. savvy that you know some of these characters do in the movie, we have a helpful translation. Um, and they sent us. They sent us this thing. Right. Um, let's see. Um, kick it would be to get together. So, yeah, we're living, it. living large is living like a person with a lot of money. I don't know how to do that. Um, Freakasoid is a woman who sleeps around a lot. A hoe. If you will. Right. Um, I think we know what a booty is. And sprung is actually like, you know, when you become infatuated with somebody. That's the In title. love or infatuated with another person. There's the title. Okay, well, let's get things started here. Waxing. Uh, what's waxing? Having sex. Okay. Hi, I'm Valor. And I'm Paul. And you're watching Box Office Banner. No, wait! I'm Valor. No, I'm Valor. This is your new cinema show. You know, we're going to talk about The Rainmaker. We're going to talk about Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. We're going to talk about Wings of the Dove. We're going to talk about Flubber. We're going to talk about Mortal Kombat 2, Annihilation. We're going to talk about Anastasia. And we're going to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. Let us know if you can. There you go, man. Good luck with your reggae, man. Hey, Thanks for the lift. Bye now. Let's get out of here. Black dog, uh, 125. This is the place. 
Looks like one of those rock and roll houses, oh, man. Oh, real Athens rock and roll house. From one extreme to the other. We got Domino's. Domino's. We got some Domino's pizza there. So Black Dog oh, yeah. really wasn't such a great movie. Meatloaf is in this, and he was pretty awful. And the stunts are just Meatloaf like a bunch pizza. of fire in it. Hey, it's, oh, hey, oh, it's the rock and roll girl. Wow, you guys are on TV. You're there on you stage. Go. A lot. Here's your hot <laughs> Domino's pizza oh, at 170 wow. degrees. It is hot. It is hot. Oh is, is boy. It and it's on. It's on the house. Is it inviting? It's everything yes. you need. <laughs> it's cheesy and delicious. I'm, I'm, I need to ask you something. I need, okay. I need to ask you something, Amber. Did you see Black Dog or not? Did you see it? You know I saw Black Dog. I know you, you saw it, but okay, what'd you think about it? <laughs> Good. I thought it was, uh, it didn't live up to my expectations. I was really excited when I realized that Patrick Swayze was going to be in an action movie with lots of yeah. semis exploding. Tight jeans. And they didn't do it justice. Uh, it, was, it was really dumb. It was, it was a bunch of explosions, a bunch of really sort of, I don't know, thick-headed dialogue. It was just stupid. So don't well, go see Black Dog. Enjoy your 170-degree pizza. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey Jeremy. Uh, we're going to cut away to our sponsors here in just a moment. And, uh, She's reaching um, to her pocket. Hey. A little something. Oh, we got yeah. it, too. Your boy's splitting. Get you Coming up, we got scenes okay. from uh, He Got Game. We're going to show you some stuff from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Uh, Bullworth. Hey, You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. And uh, a bunch Bye. of other stuff. So stay tuned. Here we go now. Let's get on out of here. All right.